Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Good morning and welcome. Uh, today we hear about Jesus, the Good Shepherd, who knows his flock and calls them by name. So let us prepare our hearts for this encounter with our Good Shepherd and Redeemer with a prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of the Lord of the Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ our Passover Lamb has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. Almighty God, our Amen. Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all of this past, and grant that we may serve you in Jesus' life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We say together, Glory to God in the highest, and the peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God our Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life, raise us who trust in him from the death of sin to the life of righteousness, that we may seek those things which are above, where he reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We sit in the readings. The reading is from Acts 4, 5 to 12. The next day, their numerous elders and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander and all who were the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, by what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how the man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders it has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. I know my own, and my own know me. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to the Pharisees, I am the good shepherd. 
The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also. And they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. fascinating and magical about the rainbow. Apart from the array of colors, we all marvel and get excited at seeing it. Adults included. Scientists have done a lot of research on it and even tried to create it. Analyzing it as mere passage of light through the reflections, dispersion and refraction through water droplets. What they haven't analyzed is why it covers so much vast areas when it happens. Would you believe science actually claims there are about 100 different spectrum of colors in the rainbow and not just the seven that we associate with it? At the end of the rainbow, there's a pot of gold, is an old adage, derived from the Irish leprechaun, who, who said to have a secret hiding place there. In some cultures, the rainbow is believed to be the bridge connecting the world of men and the realms of gods. What we don't realize though, is that the rainbow is a sign of God's covenant to us. Genesis chapter 9, verses 16 and 17. This covenant was made to Noah after the flood, promising never to destroy the whole world of the flood again. God's dispensation to us is also seen in his covenant to be our shepherd, Psalm 23, through the sacrifice of his son, Jesus Christ, for our redemption. We see in Psalm 23, that God has promised we shall not want or lack, and that He will always be with us, even through the valley of the shadow of death. The shadows of death are the dark times in our lives, the times of trial and tribulation, which we all must face for our spiritual development and maturity. The dispensation of the Holy Spirit, which our Lord Jesus Christ left with us, is to guide us, be our advocates, and also comfort us in those dark times. God's magnificent, steadfast love is unparalleled. A mother's love for a child is nothing compared to it. He wonderfully created us and has provided avenues for us to overcome whatever the world throws at us. 
despite all these provisions, we human beings in our sinful nature still stray. We were given the Ten Commandments in the Old Testament, but our risen Lord Jesus Christ in the New Dispensation reduced all to one of genuine brotherly love for one another. You can learn to love and accept someone without necessarily agreeing with their opinions nor endorsing their actions and lifestyles. You also need to forgive past courts through grace given by God through the Holy Spirit. That grace is not a natural human endowment. You pray for it and practice to get it. Today is the fourth Sunday of Easter, and we should all be basking in the love and sacrifice Jesus Christ has shown us. There is this special bond between fathers and daughters which needs to be experienced and be appreciated. The daughter believes the dad is the best thing since life's birth, worships the dad who can never do wrong in her eyes, and is a superhero mightier than Thor. Such is the way we should revere and honor our Creator. We should actually go a step further in fearing Him as He has all the powers. What then do we do to experience God's promised love, provisions, and salvation? You might be overlaboring yourself, thinking so many various restrictions, and a boring life. God actually created life for us to enjoy abundantly. The major basic rule is respect and love for all God's creations. By nurturing and protecting all living things in our environment. For the analytic mind, you might ask, what about the harmful living things like bacteria? Well, the simple answer is to avoid them as you do the play. In the same manner, you avoid evil in your spiritual lives. You don't give evil a chance to flourish or take hold in your life because once given an inch, it takes a mile. To keep evil at bay, you need to work with God by developing this personal relationship with Him through prayers and reflections. As the relationship grows, you become more confident disciples. Knowing you can approach your creator with any issue that causes stress and anxiety in your life. Cast your body now to the Lord. God knows you are not built to carry the weight of worry. So he willingly invites you to dump it on him. And he will shepherd you through it as he promised. Anything that is big enough to be a worry, no matter how small, as long as it's a source of anxiety, you should put it into prayer. Casting is deemed more dramatic than dumping. If you picture it and contrast it to, you see that casting has an action, you throw it at God, not just take it off. The more you give your worries to God, the more you discover his might. Salvation is God's promise to us and he has made this possible through the redemptive power of Jesus and Jesus' resur resurrection. Salvation can mean deliverance from evil, but another meaning is protection from harm. And that's the 24 hour a day job which God presently and willingly does for us if you walk with him. In fact, it is a promise he has made to us, to our forefathers, to protect us all from our enemies. Most times, our enemies are within us. Our thoughts, words, and actions, if we submit totally to the Almighty, he will guide us with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And he will order our thoughts, and thereby our words and actions. Submitting to God involves putting Him first in everything we do. And once you cultivate that habit, 
He guides us and we never stray. The Lord is our shepherd. God bless. Let us confess together our faith in the God who is always with us, who shepherds us and who bears our words for us. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, made of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light. True God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through whom all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was a saved man. For our sake he was crucified in the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom shall have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the Father. We believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge our baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So in joy and in hope, let us pray to the Father through Jesus Christ, who ever lives, to make intercession for us. Almighty God, throughout this Easter season, we continue to give thanks for the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ. May we too be prepared to dedicate our lives to the service of others. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for the Church, and we pray for all places of worship still unable to open for public worship. And we remember those who are remaining at home. May they soon feel able to rejoin us once more. We pray for all bishops and clergy, especially Sarah, Bishop of London, and Rob, our area bishop. We pray for Philip, our rector, and Richard, our curate. We pray too for our licensed lay ministers, Claire, Nigel, and Deji. We give thanks for their gifts as they preach and teach, and for all that they do for St Mary's and the wider parish. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for the APCM to be held following this service. We pray for the current PCC members and any future members. We pray that all discussions and future plans may prove fruitful. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for our world. And as we pray for all who are persecuted for their faith, we remember especially the people of Myanmar, forced, forced to flee following attacks from the army. And we pray for families driven from their homes. Lord, in your mercy. <laughs> we continue to give thanks to the vaccines which are doing so much to reduce the numbers suffering from COVID in this country. And we pray for the population of India, especially those who live in Delhi, where oxygen is running out and hospitals have no beds left. We pray that countries who are able to help will speedily come to their rescue. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for schools, colleges and universities 
where students are returning at the beginning of the summer term. We pray that so many who have had their education disrupted during the last year may be able to face the future with confidence in their ability to fulfil their potential. We pray for all members of staff working so hard to make this possible. We pray especially for our own school, St Mary's, and for Stephen Roos, the head teacher. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are sick, sad, or lonely, remembering those on our own prayers who are prayed for daily to service in this church. We pray that you will surround them with your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died and are now in your nearer presence. We pray for their friends and families. May their memories bring them comfort as they grieve. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Hallelujah. The peace of the risen Christ be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace.
up and took a cup of gave thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for men, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as oft as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come again. And so far, we're calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory. We celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup. And we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord. I, whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Lord, our hearts hunger for you. Give us this bread always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Hallelujah. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The body and blood of Christ. Amen.
Merciful Father, you gave your Son Jesus Christ to be the good shepherd, and in his love for us to lay down his life and rise again. Keep us always under his protection, and give us grace to follow in his steps. For the same, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and the blood of your Son Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work for your praise and glory. Amen.
Make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. In the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.
Thank you.